All right, in this video, we'll be starting off nice and slow and taking a look at type selector. We'll be discussing CSS selectors and the type selector. Hold on to your hats, let's go. So let's start off by taking a broad look at CSS selectors. As we know by now, selectors allow us to select HTML elements to apply CSS rules. For example, on this H1, we're applying a font size and color. The H1 is the selector. This is the only type of selector we've seen so far in this course. But there are in fact a range of CSS selectors. There is a large range of CSS selectors that allow us to apply styles from broad styling to specific visual details. I've broken this down into four categories. The first are basic selectors. These include element selectors and things like IDs and classes, which we'll be talking about soon. Basic selectors are used a lot. They are the most common type of selector used. Next up, we have combinator selectors. This is where the selector is defined by combining two different types of selectors. We'll also be looking at this selector later on. Next up are pseudo class selectors. These type of selectors apply when a different state or condition is met. For example, hovering over an anchor tag. They're really important and we will be discussing them in a few videos time. The last type of selector is a pseudo element selector. These selectors can target a specific part of an element. As you can see, there's a wide range of different selectors and we'll be going through each of them in great detail in this topic. Let's look at the most basic type of selector, the type selector, otherwise known as the element selector. The type selector selects elements based on their tag name. It's the selector we've been using so far. We target a specific HTML element like an H1. This is called the type selector. Let's now take a look at some type selector guidance. The type selector is useful for setting global styles to ensure consistency. The word global just mean applies everywhere. For example, these are two different pages from the same web application. If we look at the main heading on the left here, this is an H1 and it's styled a specific way. If we look on the right, this H1 is also styled the exact same way. So the CSS styling is defined on the H1 using the type selector. We can see the same thing for the paragraph text. That has specific styling like color and line height. And the paragraph on the right also has these exact same styles. Finally, the button over here, which is an anchor tag, has specific styling like a navy blue background color and rounded corners. And the button on the other page also has these same rules applied to it. So you can see that the type selector is particularly useful for setting global styles on elements which can be used throughout the project. Jumping into our Quill application on the app.css file, we've in fact already done this. If joining me for the first time in this video, Quill is the major project we've been working on. And if you haven't seen it before, don't worry, you'll be able to follow along just fine. For example, the styling on our H3, which is used in several places on the home page, is defined once using the type selector. We've given it specific values for font weight, line height, letter spacing, etc. And if we check out this element in the browser, we'll see that it has consistent styling. The H3 is used down here for our different features. We have an H3 over here and an H3 over here. And you can see the styling is consistent because it's defined once on the H3 using the type selector. We can see the same thing for our paragraph. All the paragraphs on the home page all look the same with the same font weight, line height, color, etc. So the type selector is really useful for defining global styles on different HTML elements. And just remember, when we start adding more pages to the application, the same styles applied on our type selector will also apply on those new pages. So let's finish off this video by starting to build out the next summary card, basic selectors and the cascade. In this video, we looked at the type selector. The type selector selected an HTML element like an H1. This is an example of the type selector. And in the guidance, we saw it was used for setting global styles. 
Don't forget, you can download all the summary cards and presentation slides from the bootcamp in the link in the description below. All right, we started off nice and slow, but now it's time to turn up the dial and cover some more challenging concepts. Click here to move on to the next video in the playlist and click here to subscribe to the channel to get updates.